Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And in previous lectures of GPU programming for video games, we've generally assumed that when you write a pixel into the frame buffer, you're comparing the depth of the pixel you're currently trying to write to a depth value already stored in a Z buffer if that pixel's been written to previously. And you compare those things, and basically you only write the new color value of the pixel and the new depth value of the pixel if the pixel you're trying to write is actually closer to the camera than the pixel that was already in the buffer. So you're always overwriting color values. But sometimes you may not want to just brute force overwrite the color that is there. You might want to blend the color that you're trying to write to a pixel with some color value that you've already written in order to achieve things like transparency effects. This might be for trying to render some kind of ghostly figure or maybe you're trying to render tinted windows that you can see through or this sort of thing is often used for user interface elements. So using different calls in your API, you can set different blending modes to say, add the colors, subtract them. This is something I haven't seen used very often. You might use this for something like if you're imagining that you're seeing a scene through some sort of filtering lens. If I remember right, there's a puzzle along these lines in Jonathan Blow's game, The Witness, although I don't know exactly how it's implemented in that context. You could multiply the pixel values together Although, to my knowledge, these are not used very often. The kind of blending mode that's most often used is alpha blending, where the new color value is a weighted combination of the source pixel and the destination pixel. And this alpha is a blending factor that ranges between 0 and 1. Often that alpha is the actual alpha component of a texture. So if alpha is 1, then the object you're writing is entirely opaque and you don't see anything about what was already there. If alpha is zero, then the object you're drawing is entirely transparent and you only see what was already in the scene. Many years ago, my colleague Sean Lee created this demonstration based on just the power of PowerPoint. There's no fancy 3D API going on here. Imagine that you were to draw the black square over the orange triangle without any sort of alpha blending, you would get something like this. But maybe if you were to draw it with an alpha of 0.2, then in the place where the triangle and the square overlap, you will see a little bit of the triangle blended with the square. And as you increase that alpha value, you see more and more of the orange of the triangle. Again, this is just to illustrate the idea. Here's another example Sean cooked up with PowerPoint. Imagine you have this yellow and black checkerboard pattern, and you were to draw some additional objects without using any transparency effects. So you could draw a blue rectangle on top of it, and then draw an orange rectangle on top of it, and then draw a purple rectangle on top of it. What if we were to do the same sort of drawing, but use the transparency effect? So if we were to blend that blue rectangle with what we had previously, notice that we wind up with some gray here where the yellow and the blue overlap and combine. Blue and yellow are complementary colors such that when you combine them, you'll get gray. So if we were to then draw the orange, the orange would take the bits with the yellow and give you some yellow tinted orange. And then when we draw the purple, we get some more complicated blending effects. You get the general idea. If you are not one of my Georgia Tech students, you can check out here. If you are one of my Georgia Tech students, I would like you to go on Canvas and find a video quiz 12.1. What I want to know here is how essential the particular class format was to you being able to take this class this summer. If in-person instruction would have worked for you, i.e. you are in the Atlanta area and available for class during the day, write something like, in-person would have been fine. Now, if you needed the class to be offered remotely, but you could attend synchronous lectures during the day, write something like, remote essential, synchronous would have been fine. But if you're in a situation where 
you need both the remote aspect of the class and for the class to be asynchronous because of your day job, co-op, internship, whatever else is going on, write something like asynchronous essential.